I think one of my favorite things to do out in the garden, apart from, you know, eating the produce that comes out of it, is planting fruit trees. Uh, I love planting for fruit trees and different types that I can find uh, to be able to plant in the garden. Okay, they're a long-term project and on instant reward, you're gonna give them two, maybe three years before they get up to good sort of production. But uh, they're such a, a, a great thing to have in the garden and a permanent thing to have in the garden. So when planting fruit trees, you wanna be kind of mindful of where they're gonna go and what space they're gonna fill. Uh, but also once they're in and once they're established, each year the maintenance is less and less and less, but the production that they give out is more and more and more. So it's a good, good way around, I find. Uh, so what I wanted to do is this morning is just to show you some of the trees that I've got planted up here. Some of them have been here a while, like the fig tree behind me. Some of them have been here not so long, uh, but I thought I'd show you some of the varieties that I've got. So starting first off is this fig tree that I've got here. This is Desert King. That depends on how you pronounce it. Uh, it is every year loaded with figs. You can see the figs on here now. Plenty of them all around the tree. And um, it's such a, a heavy producing tree. It's just well worth growing things like figs. And figs as a, as a plant are very drought tolerant and we have very dry conditions up here, particularly at the allotment. I know the southeast is a dry corner anyway, but particularly up here, it's very exposed. The ground, you can see the ground, is like rock hard dust. And it's very difficult to be able to keep up uh, with the watering of things. So trees that uh, do well in Mediterranean climates are kind of the thing that I'm aiming for up here that don't need too much kind of moisture. And same with the crops that I grow as well. They're kind of, they're, they're, they're low, less water plants. But this fig tree has been here for a good 30, 30 years. It's got a good size trunk on the thing. Uh, you can see down here against my foot. So it's a good size tree. It sends out suckers from the base here. And actually one of the ways that you can propagate uh, fig, there's a number of ways that you can propagate figs. Air layering is one where you uh, just score the branch, stick a load of uh, soil around it with a bag and seal it. That will send out roots and then eventually you cut it off. Uh, cuttings in the winter are very easy to do. You just stick them in the ground. Uh, also they send up these suckers from the base here and you can literally remove them if you dig down and pull one of those up. You'll get a bit of root with it, stick it in and away they go. So they're very easy to propagate from, from trees and from cuttings. So figs are, are worthwhile doing. Uh, over here I've got a couple of other varieties I'll show you. So a little fig down here, this is a panache fig, which is a striped fig. That's a new variety of trying out there. And just next alongside it here is another fig, which is a voilet dauphine fig, which is a black fig. Uh, you can see the mulch around the bottom there. You have to put mulch around newly planted trees, especially up here because you'd be up here every single day trying to water the things to get them get them going. So mulching is very important in growing fruit trees to be able to keep the moisture in the soil. Um, alongside it here is a jujube. Again, another uh, pretty drought tolerant plant. They do well in dry conditions. They're sending up a little growth. All these, this tree and the other trees were planted last year. So this is now their second year we're coming into. So that's the jujube. Uh, alongside it here is the uh, Japanese raisin tree. So this is a uh, quite an interesting tree. It'd be interesting to see how this kind of does. But the Japanese raisin tree, you eat the the panicles at the end of the branches swell, and they grow, and you eat those, and they taste a bit like raisins. So uh, another interesting tree to try and grow if you find it quintessential of any drought or dry area shrub and tree is the pomegranate this one's been planted it was in a pot for a while and so I thought I'll move it up here and so this has been it's only planted in the winter actually so February time uh, but now it's really starting to get going um, I'm not expecting it to flower just yet on this year but probably next year we might get some flowering so uh, looking forward to that and alongside it here we've got a peach tree they love the warmth and the uh, dry conditions. Uh, this is a peregrine variety, and um, this seems to be doing all right. It's set, this was set a couple of fruit, actually. So we've got a peach here, 
and a peach down the bottom there. Uh, again, it's only, it was only planted last year, so it's done one winter, and so it's not expecting to set too much fruit, but next year should set a lot more. So we're looking forward to trying that. And then alongside it here is the apricot, great another Mediterranean dry climate that does well in the southeast. So um, this is a, I'm trying to remember the name of the variety. Um, I'll put it on the screen below when I remember it. But it's a, a great uh, dry and tolerant uh, fruit tree as well. It hasn't flowered this year yet, so hopefully next year we should uh, get some fruit off of it. But love apricots. Another peach down here, this is the flat peach, satin peach. Uh, again, it flowered profusely, but didn't set any fruit, but again, it's its first year, so we're not expecting too much. It's quite a uh, low growing uh, tree, so again, it's quite a nice one to, to have in a landscape, or a small kind of landscape. So we're uh, looking forward to trying some of the flat peaches, or the satin or donut peaches, and that seems to be quite happy, happily growing there. And just behind it, currently in the shade, but the sun seems to move around. This is a uh, Pakistan mulberry, or is the giant fruit mulberry. And uh, it's, it hasn't set any fruit yet. Well, it has a couple of bits, but not really anything to, worth talking about. But hopefully next year this should uh, do well and put out some fruit. And we're looking forward to tasting some big juicy mulberries. I love mulberries. Growing alongside the sweet corn over the back is another mulberry tree. Uh, so I think it's a white mulberry over there. And then down the side here, we've got a pecan tree. There's actually two pecans. There's one, one planted here, and there's one on the other side of the shed down here. There's another young pecan. The pecans, they they need a couple of trees for cross-pollination, so that's why they're planted there. It's a young tree still, so I'm not expecting fruit. I'm not expecting fruit even next year, but we'll see what happens. But uh, just letting them get growing, get established. Perfectly tough and hardy trees, but they do like uh, warm to hot summers for um, fruit ripening. So again, another one worthwhile trying down the southeast uh, for the summertime temperatures to see how they see how you get on. So that's some of the fruit trees that are growing down here. Hope it gives you an idea of some of the things you might want to consider planting up at your allotment. Uh, I've got more trees planned to, to go in and I'll do videos on those as we uh, go along through the year. But plenty of temperate and unusual trees that I want to put up here uh, that can take, because it's so exposed, particularly in winter time, they've got to be tough and hardy enough to be able to take the conditions. So here they are planted more of temperate as opposed to anything that's subtropical. So thank you for watching the video and I'll speak to you all soon.